Um, I brought stuff with me because this is how I used to run around to all of my uh, meetings trying to convince people to give me money to build a shuffleboard club. I used to lug these shuffleboard biscuits around in this uh, Chinese lantern type style of uh, shuffleboard disc holder. I'm bringing these up here. Uh, so I think the, uh, the, the origin of our project, um, well first of all, before I get to the origin of the project, I'll zip to now, which is we're three days away from our first event, um, which is a 200 person um, holiday party for the Brooklyn Brewery, and that's on Saturday, so that's why I've prepared almost none of this. Um, yeah. <laughs> There'll be a lot of ums and sort of, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm hilariously underslept and undershaved and <laughs> underkept, and I just had dinner with my dad, and he was like, Jonathan, please take care of yourself. <laughs> um, all right, so now we'll go backwards about 30 years. Um, I grew up in Westchester, and uh, uh, my parents used to drive us, this is back to my, it's gonna sound like, yeah, a really good family. Um, we used to drive down to Florida every year to go visit my grandparents um, in West Palm Beach. And uh, they'd do 26 hours in the Oldsmobile. They would not stop along the way. Um, it sounded like a Waffle House, but we wouldn't sleep in a hotel or anything like that. We'd just sleep in the back seat. And once we would get there, they would drop us off at Century Village, the retirement home, and a uh, great name for a retirement home. And uh, they'd, uh, they'd go stay at a fancy hotel, and we wouldn't see them for the week. Um, and, and now I know why they didn't stop. I mean, why would you stop? Um, and what we used to do is we used to hang out and play, play shuffleboard, playing out by the pool with my grandparents. Um, this is actually a, a photo set from West Palm Beach in the, in the 70s, um, from Century Village. This was in the National Archives. So um, I remember a lot of these places, and, and these were the shuffleboard courts that I actually played on when we found these. Um, that's what it used to look like. It was just this really great, <laughs> synchronized swimming. Mahjong was big, really big. Um, anyway, so I hadn't been to Florida in about uh, 30 years, and I was going down there for a trip, and I was like, well, okay, well, we're going to play some shuffleboard, right? Um, and my partner was like, nobody plays shuffleboard anymore. I was like, somebody plays shuffleboard. I, I guess I had kind of seen what happened with bocce at, at Union Hall, um, a popular place in, in Park Slope, um, and uh, seen what happened with the Brooklyn Bowl and, and a lot of these things. And I was like, I never played bocce as a kid. I played shuffleboard. This was my thing. How come there aren't any shuffleboard clubs in New York City? So I went down there. Um, we sort of, I was like, a, Wound up finding the largest shuffleboard club in the world. Um, it was uh, built in, uh, I think it was 1924. At one point it had 8,000 members, um, and it has about 100 courts, and it's in St. Pete. And I said, Ashley, my partner, is, uh, is Miami anywhere close to St. Pete? And she was like, no, that's the opposite side of the state. And I was like, well, we are renting a car, and we are going to go visit this shuffleboard club. Um, so that's what we did, and we got there, and it looked like this. And I was like, oh my god, we've got to do this. They were also doing um, this. <laughs> we got to make that. I just want to go to that. Well, they do this party on Friday nights um, in St. Pete, and they get live bands and food trucks and bookmobiles, and like everybody comes out and plays shuffleboard under the stars. Um, it's young people, it's old people, it's hipsters, it's nerds, it's weirdos, it's jocks, it's families, it's like. It, and they're all playing shuffleboard together, and we're like, this, this would kill in Brooklyn, you know? Um, so, so, uh, so we got back up here and um, started, uh, and I, I basically um, decided that, that I was going to do this, um, or at least kind of decided I was doing it, gonna do it, um, and wound up, uh, oh, well, this is more pictures of St. Pete. Okay, yeah, there's trophies and there's disc holders. The whole thing kind of looks like a big Wes Anderson movie a little bit, you know, and it's like, it's all just too, it's too perfect. It's like, how has this stuff not been exploited for money yet? I don't understand. Um, is that nasty? No, I love it. Um, pins and, anyway, the, the history of shuffleboard throughout the years. That's Batista playing with his son. Um, but it's, it's a history of leisure in America over the last hundred years, you know, um, and uh, 
you know, old postcards and trophies and anyway, wound up finding this building, um, which is kind of the second part of the story. Um, and it was in Gowanus before Gowanus kind of became the buzzword that it is now and we were able to get a great lease on a place and uh, and I think that's probably where I'll, I'll separate the story from I'm building a shuffleboard club to what it's like to um, to do this because I think that's what Julian was asking about. I was, I've told the story of like because we've had to raise two million dollars to build a shuffleboard club um, and so uh, so much of what I've said up to this point is rehearsed and canned and um, it's a pitch and I've done it probably 10,000 times in order to raise the amount of money that I have um, but reflecting on what it's been about to build to do this I haven't really done very much at all and you don't really do that while you're in it um, but I think that um, what it really is about is is risk you know I mean I've learned a lot about risk and, and what that means um, I think probably the biggest risk in this whole thing was throwing down our life savings on a 15-year lease on a 17,000 square foot building. Um, I was a web programmer and my partner was a voiceover actress. Um, we didn't know anything about construction or commercial real estate or hospitality. Um, I don't really drink. I managed to have a, a kettle one on the rocks with olives, but it was like one, you know. Um, I don't really like beer. It tastes kind of yucky, you know? <laughs> like, the cran apple tastes better. Um, so I'm not much of a drinker. I don't really um, know much about hospitality. I haven't worked in a restaurant since I was 18, but I decided that we were gonna do this. Um, and when we found the space, um, it was terrifying. It was like, oh no. You know, because I was always like, all right, well, I'll never really find a place to do this in. And I would, it was just kind of a, of a lark, you know, for a couple of months, and I just would go around and waste real estate agents' time, and that's very satisfying. Um, should all waste real estate agents' time whenever you can. It's like, yes, me and my partner have about, you know, $1.5 million in capital raised. Did not, we didn't have a cent. Um, we didn't have a business plan even. We were just going around on LoopNet looking for properties, um, and found this one was completely not ready. Um, and I was like, oh no. You know, it was almost like the world presented me with like, whatever excuse I had to not do this, it was like, all right, now what? You know what I mean? Are you going to like throw down these, do you believe enough in your idea because here's the perfect opportunity to do that, you know? And that's, that was a bunch of really sleepless nights as we were sort of working out that lease and deciding, you know, and getting ready to do it. Um, but I, it turns out that the risk of, of throwing down you know, a hundred thousand um, dollars to secure this lease. It was, it was like a that's how much how much it was. It turned out to be sort of the big risk and reward thing of this. So um, we wound up getting. Is it all right to talk about numbers in this? Yeah. I guess it kind of is. You're gonna know all of like everybody in this room will know exactly how much my rent is. It's weird. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Um, so so. We got this space for about $13 a square foot, and um, it had 60 tons of air conditioning on the roof already. So people who know things about commercial real estate realize that's a really good thing. It was on Union Street between Nevins and Third, three blocks from Smith Street, and three blocks from um, Fifth Avenue. You know, but not really closer to either. Like the two, the true promise of Gowanus, and we, we kind of had to jump. Um, now it's about a year and three months since we signed the lease and space in that area is going for about $40 a square foot. Um, I, I kind of feel like I made some sort of Bitcoin type um, <laughs> investment here. Um, the, the lease alone is worth somewhere in the neighborhood of like five or six million dollars. And it was that giant, you know, it was like the difference between like $40 a square foot and $13 a square foot is like $27 a square foot times 17,000 times, you know, the 15 years or whatever it is. Point is, it turned into, it was that risk that really made this thing a possibility. So I think that the large risk leading to large reward is really, really true and, and is something that, that I've sort of taken away from this and the understanding of what risk means in some sort of way. I think the other, the other big risk in our project um, was, was me telling all my clients to fuck off. Um, and that's a really scary thing to do. It was a really 
um, comfortable um, job I had. I was I was a consultant and and was doing uh, programming for about twelve years, and it was I would do it in my pajamas with like my dog at my feet, and it was really very comfortable and nice. And I know now that like if I didn't have you know, 200% of my time dedicated to this, there's no way it would have gotten done, you know? So um, that was another really, really big risk. And then I suppose the, the last big risk, um, oh, I, I forgot I have slides. Uh, there's, there's me in the building. There's those. Okay, that's painting quartz. That's kind of what it looks like now. That's what, that's what we saw, and then this is, what we're making. Um, oh, wow. Thanks. Thank you. It's just a rendering. Don't play it. <laughs> um, it's okay. No, it kind of, it really does look like that, kind of. I, I have a picture of it right now in my pocket, but I didn't put it on the computer. But anyway. Um, so the, the, I think the, the, you know, another big risk that we took or, or that we had to take was um, sort of the, the, um, the risk of loose connections and, and what it is and the people who have unfortunately had to become like a Malcolm Gladwell guy in order to fucking get this done is terrible. Um, not that there's nothing with Malcolm Gladwell, but like just to like start speaking that language is weird, you know what I mean? And and uh, anyway, so the idea that you have to like go through all of your people that you do know before you get to these other people, because like nobody who you like have been friends with for like 20 years, 30, 40 years, or whatever it is, you know, wants to give you $50,000 to for your shuffleboard. Like, nobody who saw you, like, shit your pants in third grade <laughs> wants to, like, give you $50,000, like, $50, you know what I mean? Like, people want to have a, a new idea, an impression of you, an idea, you know? And, and what that involves is putting this out past... The, is that three minutes? Is that what that is? Three, four minutes. Three or four minutes? Okay, I got it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> just end with shit your pants. That's great. Just, just hang right there. <laughs> um, so, so, so pushing past like your immediate people and into people that you don't know, and and asking and 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 asking for help. You know what I mean? From 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 people that you don't know is is terrifying, and that feels like a really really big risk. Um, so, I think that I learned a lot from that, and and understanding that different people have different aptitudes for risk. And it started making me really appreciate, if you go back to my family one last time to sort of bring this full circle, is I think that um, when you do something like this and you put everything on the line and, and, you, and it's a scary thing and you don't sleep at night and you need all of your resources, every little thing that you have, and I'm not talking about financial resources, I'm talking about the people in your life, you know what I mean? And to know that like, hey, you know what, if it ever got so bad, I would just move back in my, with my parents in my Maranek or something like that, it would be terrible and I would fight with my mom, but I've got a place to go and I've got people to talk to, you know what I mean? And, I've got, and I started relying on my friends and on my family and on new people that I would meet. I met Julian and I was just like, I went and talked with you for an afternoon and just like we went and had lunch and you start to lean on the people around you and because of that, you, you gain new people into your life. And I also found that um, there was a lot of people who were really, really happy to help, you know, and a lot of people who wanted to give support and advice and ideas and connections and all of these different things, and it really um, changed my perspective on the type of place that this world is. And it's it's been it's been incredible, you know. And, and uh, um, I think that for any of you that have an idea um, and something that you want to do, um, please come to me, and I would love to talk to you about that idea. And I would love to be able to give something back because there are so many people that gave something to me in some sort of way, um, because that's, I, I don't know that I believe in some sort of cosmic karma, you know, but I believe in some sort of new version of karma, which is that in order to keep asking for things, which is something that you need to do when you're trying to do something like this, it's just, it's just a really hard thing to do, to constantly be needing advice 
and money and connections and who do you know and what can you give me and do you have any ideas and do you know anybody just like constantly just taking from the world in order to feel good about doing that you need to be able to give something back you know what I mean and so whenever anybody does ask you, you jump at the opportunity to be able to do something for something and somebody else I guess is what I'm saying so um, I guess the, the I'll end it with if any of you have something like that, or you do want to talk, or, or any or anything, um, come up to me afterwards. Um, I'll, I'll, I've got business cards. Um, our Facebook address is um, Royal Palm Shuffle. You can just search for that if you search for Royal Palm Shuffle Board. I'm Jonathan at Royal Palm Shuffle. Um, we've got Twitter. We've got Facebook. We've got Instagrams. We've got all sorts of crap. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thanks, everybody.